So we're given a p of x, it's a third degree polynomial, and they say plot all the zeros, or the x-intercepts, of the polynomial in the interactive graph. And the reason why they say interactive graph, this is a screenshot from the exercise on Khan Academy where you could click and place the zeros. But the key here is, let's figure out what x values make p of x equal to zero. Those are the zeros, and then we can plot them. So pause this video and see if you can figure that out. So the key here is to try to factor this expression right over here, this third degree expression. Because really we're trying to solve the x's for which 5x to the third plus 5x squared minus 30x is equal to zero. And the way we do that is by factoring this left-hand expression. So the first thing I always look for is a common factor across all of the terms. And it looks like all of the terms are divisible by 5x. So let's factor out a 5x. So this is going to be 5x times, if we take a 5x out of 5x to the third, we're left with an x squared. If we take out a 5x out of 5x squared, we're left with an x, so plus x. And if we take out a 5x of negative 30x, we're left with a negative six is equal to zero. And now we have 5x times this second degree, the second degree expression, and to factor that, let's see, what two numbers add up to one, you could view this as a one x here, and their product is equal to negative six, and let's see, positive three and negative two would do the trick. So I can rewrite this as five x times, so x plus three, x plus three, times x minus two, and if what I just did looks unfamiliar, I encourage you to review factoring quadratics on Khan Academy, and that is all going to be equal to zero. And so if I try to figure out what x values are going to make this whole expression zero, it could be the x values or the x value that makes 5x equal zero, because if 5x is zero, zero times anything else is gonna be zero. So what makes 5x equal zero? Well, if we divide five, if you divide both sides by five, you're going to get x is equal to zero, and it is the case. If x equals zero, this becomes zero, and then doesn't matter what these are, zero times anything is zero. The other possible x value that would make everything zero is the x value that makes x plus three equal to zero. Subtract three from both sides, you get x is equal to negative three. And then the other x value is the x value that makes x minus two equal to zero. Add two to both sides, that's going to be x equals two. So there you have it, we have identified the three x values that make our polynomial equal to zero, and those are going to be the zeros and the x-intercepts. So we have one at x equals zero, we have one at x equals negative three, we have one at x equals, at x equals two. And the reason why it's, we're done now with this exercise, if you're doing this on Khan Academy, you would have just clicked in these three places, but the reason why folks find this to be useful is, it helps us start to think about what the graph could be. Because a graph has to intersect the x-axis at these points. So the graph might look something like that, it might look something like that, and to figure out what it actually does look like, we'd probably wanna try out a few more x values in between these x-intercepts to get the general sense of the graph. 